Ayala Foundation is a corporate foundation that's been around for 60 years already. It was founded by uh, Mercedes Sobel and her husband, Joseph McNeekin. And art and culture really played an important part in their advocacy. The way FHL started was at first, it was a library that was connected to the Ayala Museum. And in 1996, they decided to spin it off as a separate entity, so to speak, and positioned it as an electronic library. At the time, uh, digital was not yet the operative word. But the intention and the, and the vision clearly was already in the right direction. Together with the Ayala Museum, it sort of became the, the focus of our cultural education work. The Filipinos Heritage Library, it is an online resource of World War II materials. So we wanted to have a digital annotation of all the books of Roderick Paul. There is, there's so much talk already about the military exploits during World War II, but there was very little exploration about what happened to the daily life of the ordinary Filipino and the Filipina life. For example, how did they source food? How did they get medicine when they're sick? So our first exhibit on World War II in Ayala Museum was called Manila by City at War. And wow, it was unbelievable. We couldn't believe that there was really an audience for World War II. And that is why we now have liberation, war, and hope. The motivation for the Filipinas Heritage Library to mount this World War II exhibit was meant to coincide with the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. The plan was to have a very different exhibit, one that did not focus entirely on the difficulties of the war or the whole war experience itself, but to try to portray it through a different lens, so to speak. Highlight was supposed to point out how Filipinos were able to survive that period. The second highlight was to give a very Filipino perspective, not uh, American, not Japanese, or not, not other people, but a Filipino perspective above all, uh, common people's life. And another major point that what we wanted to stress in the exhibit was how Filipinos survived the war, all the difficulties attendant to the war and the Japanese occupation, and also how we were able to rise up after the war. The exhibit was delayed because of the pandemic. It should have opened last year, so that would have been exactly the 75th anniversary. But the pandemic came, and uh, with that, the quarantines and the limitations of movement. So it has been postponed then. Yung, yung challenge sa amin was to make sure that we were able, we would be able to convey that richness. A big part of the creative treatment was largely the use of color. We started with happy, happy colors. And then as, as you go through the exhibition, you'd notice that the colors would, were starting to become dark. There's this part of the room that there's a smaller room within the, the bigger meeting room, which gave us the opportunity to create a parang black space lang talaga para and yung announcement ng war natin. So from the ha happy mood ng the sa opening scene, we lang nag dive into black ng announcement ng war. Another part that came out of the pandemic was we are going to put floor markers, largely for social distancing, but actually the, the markers contain bullet points. Yeah. Uh, it's a timeline that Sir Rico put together. When we began to look at photographs and artifacts, we wanted to show material from everyday life. So for the photographs, we chose photographs that focus not on famous people. We wanted to focus more on the ordinary people, the generally unsung. And we also wanted to focus uh, insofar as the artifacts, what were the items of importance to people who lived at that time? For the pre-war period, what tended to typify 
the life before the war, advertisements and so forth. During the Japanese occupation, what tended to be uh, reminiscent, what remem- what reminded us of the war, things like ration tickets and so forth. And then for the immediate post-war period, we wanted to show also what, what was there that we used every day, that we took for granted at that time. But today, for today's generation, it's something really uh, beyond imagination. We wanted to create a feeling. Uh, it was more a feeling of being a part, in a way, of time. Because in truth, we are a part of that story. We wanted to to, to make it um, reach that point where you realize that oh yes, this is our story. This is this is our history. Within all that structure, within all that forced military system, the rationing system and everything, Filipinos managed to survive. We managed to maintain a sense of humor. One way of surviving the difficulties was to make jokes about daily life or about simply about the Japanese. It brought out ingenuity, it brought out resourcefulness. And because we suddenly faced a shortage of things like rice, shortage of shoes, a shortage of even things like tomato ketchup. Filipinos were able to rise up to the challenge and came up with substitute products like banana ketchup. Somehow or the other, we managed to make do with what we had and so we managed to survive all those three years. Our original timetable was really short when we were commissioned to do this exhibit. By the time the pandemic kicked in, bulk of our work was already done. Was already done. All of a sudden, we had a lot of a time. lot of time. <laughs> but then also, it gave us a time to to reflect. Kami bilang team, FHL, Sir Rico, si Sir Mel, and si Desi, tapos kami ni Ruben. It really made us rethink how we all saw the pandemic. In the last scene of the exhibit, we wanted to tie it up to Filipinas Heritage Library particularly, which is in the old site of Nielsen Field. So the concluding section of the exhibit brings us from the past, what Nielsen Field was like in 1945, to the present. Nielsen Field is now Makati Commercial Center and the Filipinas Heritage Library is right in the center of it all. Many people believe that, oh, the world, world War II was such a long time ago. But again, there is much to learn from history, especially when we face new challenges today, like, for example, the pandemic. Because in the case of the Liberation Exhibit, what it really shows you is the power of the human spirit to overcome, which is really what we're all feeling now. When they see the exhibit, when they view the exhibit, they will know and they will, they will realize rather, and they will appreciate that if we're united, if we're together, we will be able to overcome whatever suffering or difficulties we have. It is still very relevant, the lessons that World War II has given us as a people. Mas mabilis lang ngayon, parang iba na yung elements, pero ganun pa rin eh, parang china challenge pa rin tayo to, be, to have hope, to believe that, that we, will, we can have a better country. And that's what war kasi teaches you eh. It teaches you to take care of each other, to value safety, to value the little things, the littlest of things. Yung images na ginamit natin sa kuwe with that little girl, it was such a hopeful image when I saw it. To me, she was an embodiment of, of every person that, that went through a very hard time. <laughs> and that's something that, that we want the viewer to, to take hope, that feeling of believing that, that things are going to get better. Despite the difficulties of the present, we want to show in this exhibit that Filipinos were and are strong, that we are resilient, that we have managed to survive difficulties in the past as we survived the Japanese occupation, and therefore we should be able to survive the present as well.